Today we're gonna to take a deeper dive at a giant misconceptions that some Rainbow Six players have, especially at the lower ranks. So for a lot of my short form content on YouTube and on TikTok, it's just strategies, setups for different sites and different operators, and they're just really plays that you can add to your playbook, right? Well, I've noticed a lot of these people specifically commenting how horrible these strategies are because of how easy they are to counter, but I think they're kind of missing the point of my shorts overall. And I'm really not sure those people fully understand the depths of the strategy and how they might appear easy to counter, but realistically, when you're playing against them, they're much more difficult to counter. So that's kind of what we want to talk about today, kind of explain why these strategies are tough to counter and why they are good strategies and what makes a good strategy. So that way you can not only make your own strategies in Rainbow Six, but that you can understand the strategies a little bit better too. Let's start off by taking a look at a clubhouse basement strategy that I received a little bit of backlash on. I'm a professional Rainbow Six player, and here's a great solo strategy for the basement bombsite on clubhouse. As mute, you're going to mute off the oil pit and dirt tunnel. This next jammer in secret is great to stop drones, and the attackers can't shoot it from the window. Throw your last mute down under the secret window, and now it's super difficult for the attackers to drone you. Because of this, you can play hyper aggressive here, and using the shotgun, win out those close range fights. If they don't come to the window, you can even hide in here to catch them off guard. If they do go to the window though, you can try your luck at a C4 kill to remove that pressure and continue on. Follow for more Rainbow Six tips. Okay, so you see the strategy, basically the whole point is you're hiding in secret using the mute jammers to deny their info. They shouldn't know that you're in there and then you shotgun them in this close range area. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do, right? Not according to these people. The main comments I want to focus on is this one person that said, attacker throws a grenade, you dead and without the Jaeger you fucked up because flashes and nades so basically just these comments saying this strategy sucks because you're gonna get naded right they know you're here they just nade you and at this point you might be thinking yeah that those are pretty dumb comments but there is a surprising amount of those or you're thinking yeah you will get naded you don't have a Jaeger you're just sitting there prone they could probably just nade you out of that spot and I 100% agree they definitely can if they can get the information on you, if they know you're there. The thing when you watch these strategies, you have to understand from an attacker's perspective, you could be anywhere on the map. They don't know where you're playing. They don't know exactly where you are all the time because they're not you. And I think this is something stupid that a lot of people don't realize is that the attackers don't know where you are unless they gather information on you, unless they have a drone on you. So if they aren't droning, they don't know where you are, which is why you can sit in these stupid ass spots and just kill them. And with this strategy, it goes even deeper than that to the point where if they do drone you, they actually can't because there's mute jammers. So in that circumstance, the only way that the attackers can get information on you is if they throw the drone in through the window onto the stairs, which is very unlikely, or they shoot the mute jammer, but they have to get really close to do that because they can't shoot from the window. Once again, they repel on the window when you shoot them on the repel or nitro the window because you can hear them on the repel, right? So anything they try to do to, do to actually get rid of these mute jammers, you can effectively counter the counter by doing the counter thing to what they are trying to counter. So at that point you realize it actually does take quite a few steps to actually break down this defense. And this is all something you do all on your own and it makes it a little bit more complex for the attackers. Especially ones that don't drone, they're gonna walk into a shotgun and you're gonna shotgun through the face and you're gonna win the, you're gonna win the round. Like, it's, it's that easy. While yes, a grenade can end you by proning in that area, the chance of them knowing you're in that spot exactly is very, very small unless they get very, very lucky by nading a absolute random spot in a random room on the map. Now we're gonna take a look at another short I made, which was a border castle strategy. And this is one of my biggest shorts that I have on my channel. So a lot of people have seen this, you might have already seen this already, but it's basically a border castle setup that yes, takes a little bit to set up. You're setting up a little bit into prep phase. It takes about a minute to set up, but at the same time, just let's just watch it and then we'll talk about I'm it. I'm a professional Rainbow Six player and here's a crazy castle extension on border to confuse attackers and make for easy kills. On the armory bomb site, make a rotate into CCTV and castle off the outer door and window on the northwest side. These are going to be covering your back. A proxy on the break door will give you info if they push in from here and castling off this double door will give you some extra cover as well. Now let's get to the good stuff. Shotgunning open this entire break wall is the most important step to give you the lines of sight that you'll need. Castle off this double door outside office first though to protect you from east stairs. To finish off the strat, open up this line of sight in CCTV to watch any attackers that try to enter the building from the south side. You can watch the east stairs, the window hop in, and can even vault up on this desk for other angles to throw the attackers off even more. Try it out yourself to win more of your rank games. 
Okay, nice little castle setup. You're putting your castles down. You can rotate through the break wall to come up to a break, to come up to the office door because it's castle off there. So there's a lot of safe rotations you can make with this one. And it's kind of interesting, kind of unique, right? And it might be confusing for the attackers. Let's take a look at the comments for it. So the main comments on this video were one, it takes way too long to set up or two, uh, it's a copper or silver strat. It would never work in a higher rank. And I have some things to say about that. Firstly, yes, it takes about a minute to set up as I already mentioned, or maybe I cut that part out. I don't know, but yeah, it takes about a minute to set up. So that's about 15 seconds into the round where the attackers are coming out of spawn which you have the time for anyway. The attackers really don't hit the building until about 15 seconds or 20 seconds or 30 seconds into the round, depending on what rank you are, how slow they come out of spawn. So you do have the extra time to completely finish this setup. On top of that, the beeper on metal makes sure no one's sneaking up behind you, and the beeper on the break door lets you know if they actually walk in through that door to cross into the hallway. Other than that, they can't get in unless they come in through the office window all the way through office and down the hallway, and that would be the only other situation. The two castles behind you are covering your back, so you have the one on the door to the armory wall and the CC window. And the CC window is really the biggest counter to this strat is somebody opening that CC window so that you can't play on that death vault and you're kind of pinned down in that corner. So while that is a good way to counter it, the other team still has to understand what the castle setup is in order to figure out how to counter it. So if they don't open that window because they wanna play on that balcony and they don't wanna get shot in the side of the head while they're on that balcony, then you have effectively pulled the strat off because now nobody can come from that east side. If they want to play on the balcony and contest the army wall, you can shoot them through that soft wall there. You can make footholds along that wall as well and shoot them through the wall while you're seeing their feet. So this strategy is one that's easy to counter, yes, but finding out how to counter it again is the issue there because you have to fully understand the setup in order to understand the counter. And you can't fully understand the setup if you don't have the right information. So people think it's so simple, it's so easy to counter. While the answer, yes, that is true, I don't think that most people are good enough at droning, especially in prep phase, to the point where they can fully understand the setup and actively decide the counter on the spot. I've run this strat a ton of times in diamond lobbies, champ lobbies, and most of the time it works. The really only downside is if you consistently use it over and over and over again, eventually it will become a common thing and people will know the counter right away as soon as they see the setup, but there's different changes you can make to it and different ways you can change it up so that the counter is continuously changing. So as long as you make it difficult for the attackers to find the counter, they might not be able to find the counter and your strat won't get countered and you've got a round win. So again, this is the exact same concept as as an attacker, you don't know what you're about to push into unless you use your drones and your information effectively to figure out what you need to do. You can't solve the puzzle if you can't see it. And that's the way I like to play Rainbow Six to an entirety. I like to pull out these strats every once in a while, see if the attackers can figure it out, see if they can break it down, see if they can win the round by countering the strategy. And if they can't, I basically won a free round just because I've capitalized on the fact that they aren't smart enough to figure out what to do, or they aren't you know, good enough, or they don't have enough information to figure out what to do. So pulling off these strats, pulling them out, changing them up, and having a playbook of these different things you can do, while it might be a little bit cheesy, it does work and if you play them right then you should have a breeze winning your games and ranking up. I just wanted to address this kind of like misconception because a lot of people seem confused but think they're right about it but realistically it's just like the lack of information that people need. So this is a complex game. There's complex things in this game and this is just one of them is uh, the idea that the attackers don't know everything and you can capitalize off that. So Try it out yourself. Let me know what you think of this video. Let me know what you think in the comments and good luck to you. Thanks for watching. Peace out.